I'm Nick Westergaard, and this is On Brand, helping you tell your story. My guest this week is Sally Christensen. When I started, if you went to the landing page of every brand that purported to be catering to the working woman, every landing page was a white blonde model. And so I just didn't feel like brands were reflecting who I was seeing day in, day out as a professional woman. And so the opportunity to infuse that storytelling, so both celebrating professional women and their journeys, and how do we give women tools to navigate the workforce and remove barriers for them. Sally Christensen is the founder and CEO of Argent, a women's clothing label on a mission to redefine workwear and drive forward women's progress. After spending a decade in the Bay Area's finance and technology space, where she struggled to find work clothes that were bold, practical, and professional, and reading hard statistics that women in the workplace are judged on appearance, which results in a tangible impact on their income over time, Sally founded Argent with a vision to arm women with a wardrobe that delivers style, functionality, and self-expression as they take their seats at the table. Argent is changing the game through providing resources, giving back to the community, and uniting ambitious women that are change makers for our current and future generations. My interview with Sally Christensen is coming right up, but first. My dad works in B2B marketing, but I never really knew what that meant. Then one day, my dad came by my school for career day and told everyone in my class he was a big ROAS man. Then he just kept saying things like, the bigger the ROAS, the better, over and over. My friends still laugh at me to this day. I think it means calculating a return on ad spend. One thing's for sure. I'll be known as the ROAS man's kid for the rest of my days. Why couldn't you just be a fireman or a lawyer? Why? You ruined my life, Dad. Not everyone gets B2B, but LinkedIn has the people who do. And with ads on LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people based on job title, industry, likelihood to buy, and more. Start converting your B2B audience into high-quality leads today. We'll even give you $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be to be. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Danielle Wiley hosts a great podcast called The Art of Sway. Danielle, tell us what you talk about on the show. The Art of Sway brings listeners inside the world of marketing as seen through the lens of influence. So each week I chat with an expert guest for a lively discussion about connecting ideas with audiences in an attempt to uncover all the ways influence impacts how and what we discover, purchase, and recommend to each other. Wow. And where can people subscribe? Go to theartofswaypodcast.com, find the show at marketingpodcasts.net, or search for The Art of Sway wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. Sally Christensen, welcome to On Brand. Thanks for having me. What an intro. Well, I, you know, it is your bio and, uh, and, and certainly uh, impressive, powerful. And as I'm thinking about this, I'm reminded that uh, my own little connection here is that I'd like to think that I am married to one of those ambitious change making women. That is how I learned about the Argent brand from from my wife, who is a big fan, and both you know working in the uh, in in the brand building space, were those people that when we get packages, we unbox them for one another and show off the different brand touch points. And I have to say that I was drawn to the the Argent experience, even when that package comes to you. It is something pretty special the, from the box to uh, the card inside that says, I believe, ambition suits you. Yeah. Um, and it is it is an, an experience. So your bio tells a bit about where this started. But uh, what was it in putting all of this together? You talk about both your own personal need that many entrepreneurs feel, uh, but also some hard statistics. What told Mm -hmm. you that this was an idea worth pursuing? 
Yeah. First of all, I will say that your wife certainly embodies the brand and I'm glad that it brought us together. Uh, and I feel like there are really cool women that exist in our community that we're discovering every day and it's really exciting and why we exist. So um, I'm just happy that uh, we made this connection. Uh, yeah. So honestly, I avoided starting Argent. I am entrepreneurial at heart and have been wanting to be in business since I can, as young as I can remember, all I wanted was my own desk and my own stapler and my own computer and notebook <laughs> and pens, you know? Um, and so I pursued a more traditional path, uh, studying business in undergrad, going into finance and banking. I pursued my MBA in international business and then went into a program at Cisco. Uh, it was their leadership rotational development program. It's essentially a fast fast track through um, the major functions in their supply chain organization. I, I've i always been driven by a desire to learn and uh, a constant pain point throughout all of these experiences was finding something to wear. And so it was always in the back of my mind and it was a shared pain point across every peer group. I did know that I wanted to start a company at some point. The way that I work is I need to have a holistic understanding of business and have that hands-on experience, which is what I was pursuing, knowing that probably around the age of 30, I'm going to quit and start something. Starting a fashion company was certainly not what I wanted to do because I know how tough of an industry it is. The business of fashion is notoriously impossible. Um, but what compelled me was reading the study that you mentioned while I was at Cisco. So this was in 2015. It was the busiest I've ever been. I was working in cloud, which was a new initiative for Cisco. I was sleeping like two to three hours a night. Um, but what was what remained a challenge was finding clothes that are work appropriate for the different demands of the job and this like casualization that was happening in tech. They were really at the forefront of that. No one was setting a standard for that. So I read this study that comes from come out comes out from HBS that quantifies the impact on what you wear on your bottom line. I'm, I have a front row seat to the problem. And that, that was kind of it for me. I just had this aha moment of this is a white space. It is the only real clear white space. I think that's in the apparel industry. Um, and because it is such a significant tool that women could be and should be leveraging I want to go after solving this from a product perspective and really innovating. So introducing style and quality and functional details that streamline the day-to-day -day. Um, versatility. So pieces that mix and match with denim, you can fully suit them, dress them up, dress them down. Like that was a real unlock. Uh, and then just creating a workwear authority. So like a place that women across all industries could stop into with confidence that they'll find whatever they need to and they will love it and it will enhance and allow them to step into whatever meeting, whatever conference feeling like themselves um, and just sort of using, you know, the dress as a tool. The brand side is probably what really pushed me into doing it because when I started, if you went to the landing page of every brand, this is 2015, that purported to be catering to the working woman I'm not exaggerating. I put a deck together uh, to support this, but every landing page was a white blonde model. And so I just didn't feel like brands were reflecting who I was seeing day in, day out as a professional woman. So like, I didn't see myself in these brands. I, it just felt like it was a check the box and an afterthought. Um, and so the opportunity to infuse that storytelling. So both celebrating professional women and their journeys, but also modeling and giving representation to a future generation of creators was really the goal. So how do we achieve gender equity? How do we, through a brand, um, and how do we give women tools to navigate the workforce and remove barriers for them? So I just, I went in you know, I'm, it's an ambitious goal, but I went in um, with a pretty clear vision on mission. And I think the other aspects of the brand have come together over time. Um, but that one has been pretty constant. Well, I, as you were talking through that, I almost saw that process as really, it's, it's almost like kept getting like a triangle in my head. Like you've got the, the two points at the bottom. It's like, this is a need I have. And then the other point on the bottom is this is a need others have. 
And then the, the, the big picture and a solution offers some real, real change, real impact. I, I'm intrigued too by you talking about, I mean, the story of it all. That's a big, uh, big underlying theme in, in the show here and talking about not seeing yourself in, in, Mm -hmm. in other, in other brands that were purporting to, to be there. So with your talk of mission, how do you create stories around the brand that I feel like this is a very clinical way of saying it, but that solves for that, that, Mm -hmm that ensures that other women see themselves in the Argent brand? Mm -hmm. I think that this took time. So out of the gates, our focus was really on the individual and iterating on our offering and like learning from that person, adding value to that person and working through like, what's the right language? What's the right product? What's the right retail experience? What's the right website? What's the right branding? The one of the biggest challenges with a consumer facing brand is that all of the elements that need, need to come together don't come together overnight. And it really takes a lot of time. So I think it takes about seven years to really get to a place where all those things match up. And there's even more that's like photography. You need teams around all of these elements. So timing and team and people. Um, So for us early days, it was really about just focusing on the individual and, and learning from her and, uh, and taking those learnings and then applying them to improving our initial offering with a, with, a goal of eventually then pulling this woman into our marketing, knowing that I wanted to build an editorial arm of Argent, but I didn't want scope creep early days. So I would say we were really focused on just getting the product right. And those like those blocks of like brand building, like that was the, that was five years probably immediately. It was obvious that this was an underserved market um, but I just think, you know, it, it all took some time to get our arms around. Uh, so from a business perspective, a revenue perspective, we were really obsessing on the, over those like first hundred consumers. Um, and it was growing and it was working. Um, but you're really flying the plane as you build it. We were starting to really scale and really like, uh, have traction and, and tw- late 2019, early 2020, as most brands were. Um, so we were getting ready for a big moment and then COVID hit which, uh, took us to our knees. I mean, it was $0 days, um, and really tough. And we made the decision to survive during COVID. Um, we ran a campaign that ended up going viral in 2020, uh, that from a revenue perspective made our year and allowed us to get past COVID. Um, but the gift of that point in time was that we were able to step back and reevaluate what we had done and look towards the future. And we had just, we had just started featuring professional women um, through our photography. So we had pulled in, you know, Olivia Nutzi, who is a writer for New York magazine, who's cover, who covers politicians in the white house. Um, She just had a huge story on Biden that uh, broke through probably about a month ago, but she's, I mean, she's had 10 covers. She's just, she's remarkable. Um, We had Josie Duffy Rice, who is a criminal um, justice reform uh, activist and has her own podcast. So we, we brought these women in, we photographed them and we were just starting to infuse their imagery into the brand. So I think that that obviously was the first step in connecting the dot between customer and then seeing themselves in the brand. During COVID, we made the decision to then bring on an editorial director. And now you can see that we've really graduated beyond focus on the individual. And we're looking at community building and connecting these women and trying to establish relationships that exist beyond Argent because there's so much value in that. Um, so we've we've certainly evolved how we feature women, um, which that's our uh, marquee editorial franchise. I would say it's called Work Friends. Uh, We do a full write-up on them. We just launched a podcast featuring them. Um, We photograph them. And then we really want to be a resource to them and to our community. So whatever we can do um, to sort of unlock relationships, that's really the goal. Beyond that, we have other 
uh, editorial franchises that we've built, things like office hours, which are write ups with women that are, you know, fully booked. And so how do we scale her time and give it back to our community and um, peer recognition where we're asking people to put forward uh, women in their network that deserve some recognition. We fly them in, we give them a suit, we photograph them, and then we do a write up on them. Um, and we've got uh, reworking the dress code. And that I think is delivering on you know, the goal of the company of really being a resource to this woman, she really just wants to be told what to wear and she wants to feel great. So that's bringing in experts to um, tell our community, you know, how to style things, which at the end of the day, she, she really is looking for. That's me. I'm the consumer. And I understand that intimately. So we're continuing to um, just bring these women into our brand in an authentic way uh, and allowing their stories to really, I mean, be part of our brand building because that's what it's all about. On Brand, we'll be right back after this. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Danielle Wiley hosts a great podcast called The Art of Sway. Danielle, tell us what you talk about on the show. The Art of Sway brings listeners inside the world of marketing as seen through the lens of influence. So each week I chat with an expert guest for a lively discussion about connecting ideas with audiences in an attempt to uncover all the ways influence impacts how and what we discover, purchase, and recommend to each other. Wow. And where can people subscribe? Go to theartofswaypodcast.com. Find the show at marketingpodcasts.net or search for The Art of Sway wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Robbie Samuels hosts the On the Schmooze podcast. Robbie, tell listeners what to expect from the show. Since 2015, I've interviewed entrepreneurs who overcame challenges to achieve success in their field or industry. Tune in to On the Schmooze to listen as I ask deep questions to elicit untold stories about leadership and networking. And where can people subscribe? Find the show at ontheschmooze.com or on marketingpodcast.net or just search for it wherever you get your podcasts. You heard them. Go subscribe. Now back to the show. So you talked about kind of the challenging inflection point of the pandemic and making the decision to to continue and um it, another thing that has certainly changed uh, even beyond the pandemic before all of that but definitely in the wake of it has been retail spaces but what you've uh, what what Argent has done around retail is is pretty innovative and feels uh, very much related to what we were just talking about in terms of uh, the mission. Talk a little bit more about your approach to retail. Yeah, I I mean to start early days. I think that the first six months or so, I was just really working through a business plan and not formally writing one up, but I just printed out like the framework of one and was thinking through all aspects of the business and who our consumer is and what our goal was with that consumer was a big part of that exercise. And I think that you do have to understand who your audience is and be really focused on that. And so I think that we've always had like a sharp and crisp understanding of who that person is. It does help that it is me, um, for, for sure. Uh, and I think that's actually why there is a white space in the category is because this industry, as most industries, is predominantly white male led. And so that disconnect is felt on the consumer level. Um, and so my, my experience was that I want to shop for these clothes in person, oftentimes because I'm doing it last minute, it's generally needs driven. There is a way for me to get ahead of that. But um, when it comes to tailored pieces, women do want to touch, feel, try on the product. Um, and we also know who this woman is. So she's busy. She's time constrained. She doesn't really like shopping that much. She's ambitious. Uh, she is moving into a you know more senior role. She's got influence over new career entrants, but she also has an executive audience. Um, and so 
uh, in establishing a retail presence, we want to make sure that we're catering to what her needs are. So sometimes she needs to hop on a phone call. Sometimes she needs to, uh, you know, take a meeting or, or it's a, a separation from her job. Then she's carved out time. So we want to cater to that and make sure it's a great experience for her. Whatever it is, uh, we want to make sure that our, our retail spaces um, support her. And then we also, beyond that, use them for community building opportunities. And so, you know, they're, oftentimes we're hosting a book launch event or if someone's launching a company or if someone has a brand that they, that they want, you know, a physical space for, we just want to amplify um, and connect, you know, women and use our leverage our spaces uh, toward that effort. Uh, we've had retail spaces since day one of our business. From a revenue perspective, they are our crown jewel and they really work. And I do think that that's important, but they're also so brand building. They really um, deliver on every goal that we have uh, from a business perspective. And so that's a big focal point for us right now. So we have three stores right now. Obviously, we were impacted by COVID. We are rebuilding post-COVID. Um, we have plans to build more stores uh, in the future, and we'll continue to um, lean on our retail footprint to just uh, give us that halo effect, but also just deliver on our, our underlying mission. So as we zoom through your brand touch points, I want to uh, get to customer service a bit because another uh, fun <laughs> story around uh, around the household was, I, I feel like it was some weekend day and... Um, and it, it, my wife Megan was uh, was uh, going through a customer service thing, and she kind of said, like chatting via customer service with someone at Argent, and she said, "I think this person that I'm talking to is the founder because I know the founder's name is Sally, and she spells it a little bit differently." and it turned out to be true. It was like, you know, a surprise trip to, to, to Disney world here, <laughs> like winning, winning the lottery when she learned that she was correct. So uh, this has got to be, uh, you know, something, I mean, you, so much of what you've said is you've talked about defining white space is just quintessentially what makes Argent such a special brand, but you are a big part of that. So what makes being a part, you've talked consistently about like seeing yourself and I am uh, her, I am that, that person that, that you're creating for, but you really walk that talk even via customer service. Why is this such a, an important part of what you do? You know, I, <laughs> this is a funny one to answer because I'm like, I don't know that I would recommend um, <laughs> having myself on customer service because I'll drop the ball all the time. But uh, I love, love, love more than anything uh, connecting with our customer. It helps me understand what's working and what isn't. And I also love to know who we are dressing and uh, how they're leveraging Argent. So those stories like feed my soul. Uh, and what's really, what's really stood out to me in the last few years is that our goal of giving women confidence is working and they're reaching for Argent in moments that they really need that confidence boost, whether they're stepping on stage or, you know, going on TV or going into a big meeting, negotiating a big contract. It has been consistent that women are reaching for Argent. And that excites me so much to be a part of those moments and to have a front row seat to these uh, career defining experiences for women. So I think for me, well, one, I want people to have a great experience, um, but really I just want to stay connected with the customer as much as possible. So I will jump in on uh, customer service at times. The problem with that is that uh, if I respond, then it, when the customer comes back, it will go only into my email. And so I certainly drop the ball because I, as you can imagine, have other <laughs> responsibilities. So it's not something I would recommend in its entirety, or I need to figure that out. But 
I love it. And, um, you know, the school of thought is higher for things that stress you out or take away your energy. For me, this is something I always want to stay close to because I think it is our superpower and what we're building in terms of um, brand building and, and Argent being an extension of myself. I think that authenticity comes when you start a brand and it is so closely connected to who you are. I will say that I was very reluctant to be front and center um, and use my, you know, I'm just more of a behind the scenes introverted person generally. Like I wouldn't have social media if Argent didn't exist. And so I think I was reluctant to be the face of the brand. And you can see that in our early day footprint. Um, With that said, it is necessary. People want to know you. People want to hear from you. I think that it's a it's a pretty important part of, of building something like we're building. And so I've leaned into that more in the last few years. And uh, it's working. It's tiring, but it's it's working and it's exciting. It's exciting because uh, I think it just gives people an, something else to connect to. But I also think that um, it's it's sort of serving again on our founding mission, which is to remove barriers for women and just give them a push. And so um, through doing things like the podcast, which I'm hosting, uh, we're giving women access to these conversations with these high powered, successful women. Um, and we're talking about how imperfect and, um, you know, how messy success can be. And, uh, we're talking about all the bias that we've encountered. And I think hearing those stories, especially for new career entrants is pretty invaluable because we're all fighting our own fight and, and we're just um, trying to give you armor and trying to raise awareness that we're all on the same journey of overcoming a lot of obstacles because we live in a, in a patriarchy. Um, so that's sort of the evolution of, of using my likeness, I guess, with in association with the brand. Yeah. And it all comes back to what you said too, about looking for a brand that you can see yourself in. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's a big part of that, but also in, in who you see in the brand that is breaking barriers. And, you know, I have to mention that, uh, Argent's community has, you know, has, Suits on folks like Dr. Jill Biden, Hillary Clinton, Meghan Markle, Gloria Steinem, Amy Poehler, and Kamala Harris, Mm -hmm. who, as we look at in this moment, um, you know, it seems very much aligned with what you were just talking about in terms of, of breaking barriers and armoring up. So what... What does it mean to have your brand, which you've designed really for this moment, being a part of this moment in such a way? It's pretty surreal. I'll be honest. The last couple of years. So the bet that we made during COVID was <laughs> that I made and I received so much pushback on this, but I, I just knew that coming out of COVID, there would be delayed consumerism. It would be a wiped out competitive landscape and that there would be an appetite for the product in a way that we'd never seen before on the brand side, on the mission side, I did not anticipate how women were going to come out is like, it surprised me how much conversation I have heard and seen around ambition, how much conversation I've seen around money that's historically been taboo for women um, politics, you know, reproductive rights. I think that women are talking about, things and fighting for things because COVID was a really tough time for women, especially uh, over, you know, millions of women were displaced from the workforce, just given the the pressure of, of family and balancing work. Um, and so I think as a result of that and feeling like they weren't taken care of by society, they showed up stronger than we've ever seen. And that's really encouraging. And it's such a match for our brand, obviously. Um, and so I just think there's this energy around women and we recognize that, you know, I, I'll butcher whatever the saying is, but like, we are now the adults in the room and we are the ones that need to show up and fight for, um, ourselves and our daughters. And I think that there's just this newfound energy and connection, uh, and mindset shift. So I think the generation above us has given us a gift because they had a mindset of scarcity and we have been allowed a mindset of abundance 
And so I just think there's something really special and magical happening with women right now. I also think there's so many incredible allies that recognize that um, supporting women through their career and allowing flexibility if and when they decide to take care of parents, aging parents, or have kids and start their own families, keeping them in the workforce is good for the economy. Um, and so I just think there's, um, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of progress that's been made since we started Argent and it's incredibly exciting to be a part of the women that we dress, like their individual journeys. Um, and then it's also exciting to see them all come together and connect through the brand and it's women across different backgrounds, different industries that wouldn't have connected otherwise. So I think that women are just, um, operating at a different level than, even I've seen before. Um, and to be a part of that is like the greatest gift. Uh, that's why Argent was founded and to be dressing the women that we are, uh, it, it's incredibly exciting. And honestly, like the women that I get the most excited about are women that are not household names. And those are the ones that we're trying to feature and celebrate and, um, you know, platform because that's, that's the thing is that women have been sort of, you know, lurking in the shadows when it comes to work and haven't always been recognized or compensated or, you know, um, spotlighted for really, really hard work and balancing so many things in their lives. And that's what our goal as a brand is. Uh, and it just, it feels like a really exciting time. So to be a part of that is, that's what gives me the energy to still be standing. Oh, that's awesome. Sally, this conversation has made me smile so many times. I am excited to get to ask you for a brand that has made you smile recently. Oh, I knew the question was coming and yet still it's a hard one. I mean, I, let's see. <laughs> I have, as, as you can imagine, uh, I encounter a lot of brands in in my <laughs> orbit. Uh, I think, you know, if, are we talking about a consumer brand or any brand? Any brand. Yeah. Could be a I, personal brand in, in anybody. Oh, Oh, I've, 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 I've flummoxed. I see. I've, I've... Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, from a branding perspective and this will timestamp our conversation, what's happening around <laughs> Kamala Harris is incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is best outcome you ever could have imagined in terms of coalescing around a candidate and how they've like stepped into this moment and really um, met the moment. So I think that that, uh, has put a smile on my face because I've seen women showing up, especially and young yeah. women registering to vote for the first time. Um, and there, it just has re-energized, um, a lot of people who I think were feeling disenfranchised, um, something more simple. There's a brand super smalls, uh, that's focus. Their focus is on, um, kids and making accessories for kids. And uh, we recently just got these like little gems that are like stick on gems that my kids are having the best time with. So that put a smile on my face just because um, there's levity to that and there's fun in that. And they're having a lot of fun uh, through their brand and through their products. And it's a female founded company. It's a great company. Uh, and all of their products make me happy because they make my kids happy. Awesome. I love all of that. Sally, where can folks go to learn more about who you are and what you do? Oh, boy. Okay. So a couple of different ways. Uh, social media. I mean, I honestly think you can find find out more about me from following Argent than following me. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but Instagram uh, is Sally Christensen. Uh, and then we're at Argent. Uh, we, as I've mentioned a couple of times, recently launched a podcast, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's called Work Friends. Uh, you can find that on all uh, streaming platforms. And then our website is argentwork.com. I think those are the big ones. And LinkedIn, awesome. of course. Awesome. Well, we will link up to all of that in our show notes, which folks can always find at onbrandpodcast.com. Sally Christensen, thanks for being on brand with us. Thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. On Brand is part of the Marketing Podcast Network. If you like what you're hearing, if we've made you smile, you can always listen free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever your favorite platform may be. And please take a moment and rate and review the podcast to help others find the show. Until next week. 
I'm Nick Westergaard, and I'll see you on the internet. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Danielle Wiley hosts a great podcast called The Art of Sway. Danielle, tell us what you talk about on the show. The Art of Sway brings listeners inside the world of marketing as seen through the lens of influence. So each week I chat with an expert guest for a lively discussion about connecting ideas with audiences in an attempt to uncover all the ways influence impacts how and what we discover, purchase, and recommend to each other. Wow. And where can people subscribe? Go to theartofswaypodcast.com, find the show at marketingpodcasts.net, or search for The Art of Sway wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.